Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Today our topic is a video made by James White. Actually the video is not really new. I thought in the beginning it's new but it's an old video. And supposedly this is an uh, uh, interfaith dialogue. Uh, in this uh, video, uh, James White looked like he invited uh, Yasser Qadri, who is very well known aggressive Muslims, who support Zakir Naik, who is accused by terrorism. Actually, yesterday, just yesterday, he had an interview with him. And, you know, my uh, my statement is not really for Yasser Qadri. I know Yasser Qadri, what he believes. I know what Islam believes. But our video today to discuss how those who call themselves Christians, many, or they claim to be uh, uh, like debating Muslims, how real they are. You see, when you invite a Muslim to your church and you put him in the stage and you let the Muslim go away from all the lies he said and you keep shaking your head, you are inviting someone to convert people to Islam and you are part of it. In the Bible it says that you should not spread false report. You shall not join hands with the wicked man to be obviously a false witness. So why uh, uh, why this man he is doing this? Why he is joining you know with the wicked believe Islam Muhammad is a wicked man do that if he is really a Christian person as he claim this person will never hesitate to attack the Catholic just say the word Catholic he will have his gun and will start shooting left and right the second you say Islam he is right there to defend if you look at the comments of Muslims about James White you will see all Muslims they love James White and even some fake comment from Christians. Look at this. This has warmed my heart. I really wish the kind of public dialogue happen more often. I find so hard to believe that fellow Christians are demonizing James White for engaging in this. We all need to live together well, understand each other, and communicate with each other. Uh, despite our theology differences here you will see either this person who posed this comment is an idiot or she is an idiot because it's not us who refuse to live together it is Islam who don't believe in living together Islam believe notice right away they are misleaded by or they pay so when those people they present for us a message which is not there If we go in the Quran, this is why I believe people like James White is very dangerous, extremely dangerous for us as a Christians. For he is in the house and he is there to deceive you. He is more dangerous than Qadri himself. Here we go, his message is so clear now. And those Christians now who listen to this person, they think that Islam is a good religion and Islam like to live with us. The problem, we are demonizing Islam. The problem, we are making Islam look ugly. The problem, we don't want to live with Muslims. This is what James White making them believe. And the comment is so clear. This is the Quran says about the Christians. Fight those who don't believe in Allah, nor the last day. And they don't forbid what Allah forbid. And they don't approve the Prophet Muhammad. And nor acknowledge the religion of truth, which is Islam. From who? From the Christians and the Jews, the people of the book. So look at this man and why he want to kill us because the Jews believe there's a guy his name is Uzair the son of Allah and the Christian believe that the Christ is son of Allah first of all we don't believe in Allah but what important for me that those who listen to James White even if they are Christians I look for the video by the way all his YouTube channel look like he took it down he took it down the only one who have it is Muslims. Why James White is making such a thing against Christianity? Why he is fooling the Christian? This 
this lady, if she is a Christian for real, because sometimes Muslims they use Christian names just to deceive people. But if we, uh, uh, you know, uh, assume she is, that means she was deceived by James White. Look at this. I am tired of a Christian who never seen spoken to Muslim. I grew up all my life in Islamic country. What are you talking about? I'm an Arab. Let alone from a friendship or be neighborly with Muslim neighbors, criticizing those of us who do so. I mean, look at this stupidity. The Quran says, take not the Christians and Jews as a friends. Chapter 5, verse number 51. So do you see what James White he did to the Christians? This person is committing a crime against Christianity, promoting a cult, it's called Islam, which teach nothing but hatred against Christians. It is us who say we love the Muslims. It is us who say we have no problem to have a friend with Muslims. But it is Islam who says, take not Christians and Jews as a friends. But now because of this man, who call himself James White, Christians are deceived. Why we don't take the Muslims as a friend? The Christian lady she's asking. She is a follower of, of, of James White, obviously. Maybe from his church. Why? Who said we don't? Who, who said we don't want to do to so? Where do you get this from? It is Islam who teach the opposite. This is a chapter 5, verse 14, where Islam says that Allah will spread hatred between the Christians until judgment day. That's Quran. So the lady she was the the follower of james white deceived by james white saying let us forget about differences and live together as neighbors but you're inviting muslim who's a sheikh to explain to you what is islam is about and now supposedly his explanation is accepted by james white and now the misunderstanding is gone why james white don't say that allah he will spread hatred between the christians until judgment day on the stage to the, to, to yasser al-qadiri why he don't face him with those verses? Because he's a potato, he's a liar, he's a deceiver, sadly. He is no Christian. A Christian will not side with the wicked Muhammad. No Christian, you see, I'm not against Muslims, I don't have problem with Muslims as a human being. The Lord, our Lord, our Savior, order us to love them, to help them if we can. You know, when I was in Europe, twice I, I give my, my, my bus seat or my seat to a Muslim woman. One in the garage and one in the bus. In the garage, I was waiting for, for, the, for the bus to come next to the airport. An old woman, she is a, she is a Muslim. She have no place and it was raining. So I gave her my seat and I stood in the rain. Because for me, she is like my mother. She's a Muslim or not. So why this James White is lying to us, lying to the Christians? What he's accomplishing exactly by what he's doing? Look at this. Listen to this. And this is why the Muslims, they love his video. You will not find one Muslim speaking negatively about james white and this is telling the whole story when 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 a, when a cult followers praise your work well you are you tell me why listen to this this is the presentation of james white it hardly ever happens and that is two communities where unfortunately there is a lot of fear on both sides there is a lot of misunderstanding mm -hmm. on both sides and as a Christian, uh -huh. I want to see doors opened. As a Christian, I want you, as if you are a Christian here this evening, to not have fear of the Muslim people, hmm. but to have love for the Muslim people. Okay, hold on, hold on. You see, you see how he deceive you? Don't have fear for Muslim people. We don't fear a person. We fear the teaching which will make the person do something wrong. Do you see how he play with the words? Is our fear from a person his name is Muhammad or our fear from the teaching of his prophet Muhammad? 
that when this person, he became a true believer, he would do something wrong, like joining ISIS or Al-Qaeda. So look at this liar. He's saying, you should not fear born from a Muslim family. So is our topic really is about Islam or about Muslims? This liar, he tried to make it like we are against Muslims. Just because they are Muslims, we are against them. That's a lie. That's a big fat lie. Our problem is with Islam. And Islam made Muslims do something wrong. Attacking the Christians, killing the Christians, forcing the Christians to convert to Islam, and the news all over. So what this guy trying to do? Mom, how do our communities talk to one another? The sad fact of the matter is that conversation... Did the Yasser Qadri support to give a freedom of religion in Pakistan, and open churches in Pakistan? Do he dare to say that in his country, Christians should not be killed just for being Christian? He will not ever say, say that because simply he support that. So what this dialogue is about? This dialogue is to promote Islam and you will see it loud and clear. He bring a Muslim to present Islam to us in a very fake way and he sponsor him slowly and softly. And now the presentation saying, listen to this guy, he is telling you the truth. But did Yasser Qadri say any truth in what he said? Let us see. And I want to start tonight. And I want to start here. So uh, if, if you're a praying person, pray that we will have understanding. That as if you're a Christian, I want you to hear what this man has to say. I want See? I want you to hear what this man has to say. You have wrong understanding. So we have a, a, a history of 14 centuries of killing Christians, taking their land, raping their women, forcing the jizya and the... Listen to this guy. This guy will tell you the truth. It's not what you know. It's not what you saw. The truth in that chair next to me. I want you to understand why he believes the things he does, what his life is like here in the United States as a Muslim. And I want you to hear, especially when he talks about what Islam is and what it is not and who speaks for Islam and all these types of things. I want you to hear so that we can have better communication with one another. That's why we're here this evening. Uh, I hope that uh, somebody saying he did not say that. OK, let us play it again. Listen carefully. Isn't it the whole dialogue is about you misunderstood Islam? So what do you mean he, he did not say that? You misunderstood. What misunderstood mean? That means Islam is not bad. Did he say that? The one who said in the chat, he did not say that. What's wrong with you? Are you listening? Listen carefully. Conversation isn't happening. And I want to start tonight. And I want to start here. So uh, if, if you're a praying person, pray that we will have understanding that as if you're a Christian, I want you to be unique. It hardly ever happens. And that is two communities where unfortunately there is a lot of fear on both sides. There is a lot of misunderstanding on both sides. Did you hear it? What is the misunderstanding we have in the other side, our side? Can James White explain to us what is our mis So when he brings Yasser Qadri, did he change? Did he clear the misunderstanding? What is exactly the misunderstanding we have? That Muhammad is a terrorist, and this is wrong. That Muhammad is a false prophet, and this is wrong. That Islam teach violence against Christians, and that's wrong. We have that reference in front of us. Oh no, James White, he heard my message. And not only that, do you know what he said? He said he knew who I am and he can tell the Muslims who I am. He made a threat. This is who he is. Go watch his video. Oh no, no, he heard me. This is how low he is. And then he tried to fix it. He sent me a new year on Facebook. And then he sent me a greeting with the Sam Shamoon. I'm not going to accept you. You have no honor for me. I will never shake hand with you. No, no, he, he knew who I am very well. He knew that he's wrong. He knew he thought maybe by shaking hands or saying that 
uh, happy new year or send me greeting with somebody i will let it go I, we don't let go for liars we are not doing business here we don't side with you for you are my friend i don't friend with someone is wicked someone is a liar someone promoting the devil in the church And as a Christian, I want to see doors opened. As a Christian, I want you, as if you are a Christian here this evening, to not have fear of the Muslim people, but to have love for the Muslim people. I want the Muslim people to understand that we care and that we want to have dialogue and that we're not seeking this evening to sweep our differences under the rug and say they don't matter. Dr. Qadi cannot present an Islam that is just simply one view amongst many. I believe in... That's a big fat lie. Yasser Qadri, he is a Muslim Sunni, and this is the major sect of Islam. He is a Sunni. Divine revelation, he believes in divine revelation. So how do we get along? I believe in divine revelation, he believe in divine revelation, which means he confirmed that Islam have divine revelation. Long. How do our communities talk to one another? The sad fact of the matter is that conversation isn't happening. And I want it to start tonight. And I want it to start here. So uh, if, if you're a praying person, pray that we will have understanding that as if you're a Christian. He's trying to make you believe that Muslims here are victims. They are discriminated. And not only that, this liar he caught later, I did not see the whole video, that he, his back is a check because he have a, a, a book about Islam inside the package. I mean, who can believe in such a garbage lie? Your name is James White. Very well known. And you aren't a Muslim. And the security, they open the back because there is a book about Islam inside. They cannot see inside. What, they can see there's books, but they cannot see what the name that is a big fat lie so this person is trying to make us believe that muslims are discriminated actually muslims they are protected more than anyone after 9 11 george bush himself he went to the mosque saying islam mean peace right away immediately so nobody would hurt them Did you hear any Christian saying, go and do something wrong to the, to the Muslim after 9-11? Never. So what this guy is talking about? How would it feel to be a Muslim in the USA? As if they are like, you know, people, they spit on their face. What about you ask him how it feels to be a Christian in Pakistan? Look at this idiot. And instead of asking him why you muslim don't treat the christian nice look here you are a citizen you can be a congressman you can be a senator you can be whatever you want already we have congressmen who praise islam and they say the jews are monkeys in america so how would it be to be a muslim in america what does that mean so he tried to make you believe that we are doing bad to the Muslims. You Christians are bad people. Like what? What did we did? As a Muslim. And I want you to hear especially when he talks about what Islam is and what it is not and who speaks for Islam and all these types of things. And who speaks for Islam? You need to hear him. It's a promotion for Islam. I'm not going to waste your time and listen to the whole video because it's full of garbage. Oh, he would never talk about Christian Coptic being killed, the Christian in Nigeria getting killed, Christian in Ethiopia getting killed, Christian, you know, because simply he, he would never make a Muslim upset. Look, look at the comments. All of them, they are praising him. Nobody posts his video except Muslims. Do you see any Muslim saying something wrong about James White? You will never find it. 
Mr. White and Mr. Kadri, very humble servant of God. Which God? Isn't it the God of, 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 of Yasser Qadri says, kill the Christians and kill the Jews? And he believe in every word there? And all those who watch those videos now are a victim, especially if you are a Christian. And the Muslim, they say, may Allah bless you, James White. See? God bless him. <laughs> anyway, let us go a little bit in this video so we can laugh together. Just to see that the whole video is nothing but about deception. Uh, I will move to minute number 15, 15, just to save time, because all the garbage is like making Islam look nice, Islam is a good religion, we Christians are not understanding Islam, this is the whole point, let us see. Five times a day, every single day. Hmm. Hold on. And if you do so, you shall live peacefully. At least heart, your heart will be at peace in this world. And you shall. What, 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 what you see on television is but the Jerry Springer equivalent. It is but one, you know, minuscule strand. And I don't even know how else to say this other than the, the, the Islam of ISIS or the Islam of terrorism is not an Islam that any one of us in this audience has grown up with. Really? This guy, he grew up in Pakistan. This is the land of terrorism. Isn't it your prophet, he said, I've been victorious by terror? And James White is bringing this guy to lie to the Christians and he is watching and he as if he heard nothing and he knew that is a lie. Is that Muhammad saying, I've been victorious by terror? Do you see it? Did Muhammad say, I've been victorious by terror from a distance of one month journey? Do you see it? This is all is authentic, and this guy is a Muslim Sunni. He accept every single word there. Actually, he will kill you if you if you if you insult what Muhammad said. So he brought him to a church. And now the church, and he told them from the beginning, you need to listen, he will tell you the truth. James White said to them clearly in the beginning of the video, and you heard it, this guy will tell you the truth. We have a misunderstanding. I've been helped by terror in the heart of the enemy. Do you see it? It's in front of you. This is Muhammad's statement. I've been held victorious by the terror from a distance of one month journey. Do you see it? Who is lying here? You see, this is what Muhammad said. And this is what James White and Yasser Qadri said. Which one of them is we can, we can consider to be telling the truth? I have been given five things, which no given to anyone. Muhammad is proud about what he's given. He made me victorious by Awi, which means terror of a frightening my enemies from a distance of one month journey. I mean, look how ugly he is to the point if the enemy heard about Muhammad in a month journey, he got terrified. You see how peaceful he is? Are you going to be terrified from a month journey distance if you heard the name of Jesus is coming? No. Peter coming? No. Paul is coming? No. But you will be terrified by hearing that Muhammad is just a month journey away from, look how far he is, a month journey. And people are terrified from him. And James White saying to us, we have a misunderstanding of Islam. And Yasser Qadri, he says, those terrorists don't present Islam. When the fact just today, he have an interview with Zakir Naik, who's accused of terrorism, and he is wanted in India.
So if you are a Christian, if you are a Muslim, if you are a Hindu, if you are a Jew and you are listening, who is lying here? I'm showing you what Muhammad said. Even Muhammad, he, he swear that if he get to be victorious, he will cleanse the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula. He will cleanse them. You know what cleanse them? Genocide. I heard message of Allah saying, I will certainly expel the Jews and the Christian from the Arabian Peninsula. Well, but he just said to us, ISIS don't present Islam and Al Qaeda, and this is not this is not this is not what Islam we grow with. Look like Yasser Qadri did not grow with Muhammad, and he don't believe in Muhammad. Look like he have a new religion. Yasser Qadi, Yasser Fadi, who care? The promise is so clear, and this is Sahih. The Muslim cannot say, oh, this is uh, not authentic. It is very authentic that Muhammad, he made a promise. And right now, there is no single citizen. He is a Saudi in Saudi Arabia, in the Arabian Peninsula. Why? Because they cannot allow someone to become a Christian for this is against Islam and Muhammad he made it clear That the Arabian Peninsula have to be only Muslims Why because Islam believed that Christians and Jews and Hindus and Buddhas are dirty filthy dogs If we go right now in front of your eyes just to show you how this man he is really, really, he make me sick, this James White. You see, I understand that Yasser Qadi or Qadri, whatever his name, is trying to deceive us. That's, that's normal. He's a Muslim. He's, he's a follower, follower of Muhammad. What do you expect? A Muslim who promote Islam, he have to do that. But why someone like James White, who claimed to be a Christian minister, doing that? Because he's a fraud. Literally. Look at this. You see, we don't say things without proofs. Once somebody said in Fox News that Muslim they practice Muslim only uh, uh, Zoom, no go Zoom. People they went against those station. You know, you, you are you are uh, you have a bigotry. You are teaching hatred. You, you know, you are uh, you, you know just because the person he said that, but this is truth. Read it. Muslim only, non-Muslim only. Do you see it? In the highway. They have a sign for Muslims, the highway, because if you go to Mecca, they will kill you. If you go to Medina, they will kill you. Muslim only. Do you see it? This is in the public street. So when this madman, James White, he says, imagine you are a Muslim living in America. What in America? In America, we have a highway only for Muslims. In America, we teach that Muslims are filthy, dirty. We don't. This is what the Quran teach. Can we trust this man, his name, James White? Are you willing to send your children to his so-called church? If you send your, you know, your, your child to, to his church, he will end up Muslims, following the devil Muhammad. And I'm doing this video not because about him. My worry is about you. He knew his line. He knew very well. And actually, this is why he took the video down from his channel. Because everybody noticed that he is siding with Islam. Like his, uh, his cover was really clear in this video.
clear to the point nobody can deny it tell us more yes sir qadri about islam please look like we, we have misunderstanding obviously go ahead honestly we have the, the we are just as shocked as you that's not the islam of my parents that's not the islam of my mosque this is as alien to us as it is to you he never heard of the quran this guy he's a sheikh he recite for us the chapter of Tawbah every day but he never heard of this before he never heard of his prophet saying that i've been victorious by terror he never heard i, I should kill the christians he never heard this before what are you talking about we are shocked we are shocked like you know more than you Unfortunately, the problem comes that the perception is that this is the normative or this is the mainstream. And we're going to come eventually in the questions, I guess, to some of the causes of why this is happening. But what exactly is Islam? Well, in a nutshell, very simply, very simply, hmm. Islam is the admittance and recognition that there is one supreme God in being who hmm. is almighty, all powerful, all loving, all knowledgeable. There is only one God, that is the God of, of Abraham, of Moses, of Jesus, of Muhammad, that that God is almighty, all-powerful, and worthy of being worshipped and venerated. No other being is worthy of being worshipped. Islam tells us that uh, God continued to send prophets to mankind with the same message. So for the Muslim, the Muslim is one who is... Christians, listen carefully. Muhammad, he have the same message of Jesus. The same message. And did you hear James White saying, well, you know, I don't agree with you that he have the same message. No, he's just making a presentation and he is agree. He, he will shake his head. You see, when you give a stage to somebody to poison the mind of the Christians and you sit there and you shake your head, that's mean you are promoting it. Shouldn't James White say, you know what? Yeah, I agree that you are saying presenting yourself for your religion is. But no, we don't agree that Jesus and Muhammad have the same message. No, we don't. Muhammad, he promote killing, rape, lying. He, Muhammad, he said, you can lie in three to your wife, to your to your to, to your enemy, and to to your friends. Who's left? Jesus says, either you say yeah, yeah, or nay, nay. Muhammad, he said that you you know you will have a lot of women for sex in heaven. Allah will make your private part, your your penis endless. Is that the message of Jesus? Jesus said in heaven, he and she, they will not get married. They will be the same as angels. Is it the message of Jesus that we have God with the Spirit or without Spirit? Don't we believe in the Holy Spirit and this Holy Spirit is God divine? The Muslims don't believe that God have a Spirit. So how we have the same message and he is sitting there like a potato, listening and promoting Islam, bringing a guy to the church so people will believe. And he told them he will tell you the truth. Uh, following the religion of Islam. For the Muslim, Islam is not new. It's not an Arabian religion. It didn't begin uh, with the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, Moses, Abraham, Jesus, uh, Adam, they're all teaching the same essential message with some fine tunings, but the message is the same. There's one God, love Him with all your heart, worship Him to the best of your ability, and praise God and follow the law and if you do so you shall live peacefully at least heart your heart will be at peace That's in it. this world and you shall attain god's kingdom and god's grace in the next okay what if we don't believe in your god you should you if you do that you should live peacefully why james white don't say okay if i am a christian in your land in a land occupied by muslims and i don't want to believe in allah what should happen <laughs> nothing he never say anything. He's just watching, listening. So the Christian will be deceived and lied to. Next world. This in a nutshell is Islam. That there is but one God. The, the, this God is worthy of veneration and worship. And to be a good person, you have to believe in him, worship him, follow the law, uh, uh, obey the commandments. And if you do so, there will be a life after death. And there is heaven or hell uh, where there is accountability. In a nutshell, Islam is the same uh, religion that Abraham and Moses, and from our perspective, I guess we'll come to this as well, Jesus and the Prophet Muhammad taught. It's not something that began a thousand, five hundred years ago in Arabia. Mm -hmm. um, 
I guess I want to talk a little bit about as, as, as being a Muslim, there are certain things you have to do. There's rituals that are mandatory. Uh, I'll just mention uh, uh, three of them, and there's actually five. Right. Uh, or I can actually mention very quickly the five. Right. The first is the testimony of faith. And the testimony of faith is two sentences. I testify that there is no God worthy of worship other than the one true God. We call him in Arabic Allah. Allah is not a foreign God. Allah is the Semitic term for God. Mm -hmm. Christian Arabs use the term Allah. Jewish Arabs, and yes, there are Jewish. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see? And James White, he shake his head. Christian Arab, they use the word Allah because they are under the occupation of Islam for 1400 years. This is why you see only those who they live under the Islamic occupation, they use the word Allah. The second you ex exit the border, you know, people who did not live under Islam, they don't say Allah. They don't. As simple as that. Why? Because we have ISIS for 1400 years. And I am an Arab Christian. And yes, this is true. The Arab Christian, they use the word Allah. But for them, it's used as a word meaning God, which is stupid to say. But I understand they've been forced to. People want to live. But even after leaving the, using the word Allah, still they kill them. Actually, in uh, militia, the government... They made a law that says that the Christian cannot use the word Allah no more. In that country, the Christian, they use the word Allah, which is stupid to do, wrong to do. Let me see the news. So why they forbid them from using the word Allah? Hmm? Why they forbid them, the Christians, from using the word Allah? Do you see it? It's in front of you. It's forbidden for a Christian to use the word Allah. They ban it. Why they ban it? What's exactly the problem? Because Allah is the name of the God of Islam. This is not the name of the God of the Christian. Do you see the hypocrisy? There's a freedom in Islamic countries even to the point you cannot even call your God Allah. Do you see how much Muslims are aggressive against the Christians? I mean, how come this guy here trying to make us believe that Allah is the same God, but in their countries, they don't want us to use the word Allah no more? And I will tell you why. Because they notice many, they are converting to Christianity in those churches and they say to themselves most likely because those muslims they go to the church and they see those christians using the word allah and that make it easier for them to leave islam and become a christians for this is the name they grow up with and this is they are not a changing god it's the same god so they said we should forbid them from using it anymore so no more muslims will leave islam and become a christian So when the Muslim, they need you, they wish you would use Allah, they, they will wish, they will, they will do their best. Like in America now, they wish everybody say Allah. But if they are the majority, they bend in the ruler, they bend in the, in the mood. Like now the ruler there decide this is not good for us, so we will, we will ban it. But all of us, we knew that Allah is a fraud. What else? Arabs use the term Allah. Allah is a Semitic uh, term. Allah is an Aramaic word used by the Sabian for the name of their God. Al Lah. Al is a word mean God. Lah is the name of the God, and Lah is the moon God. And this is the same name used by the Egyptian. Why? Because the Egyptian themselves are Sabian. This is why the Sabian in their book is called Kenza Rabba. 
let me find it for you in their book Kenza Rabba there's Kenza Rabba left Kenza Rabba right maybe later I will make videos about is the same as the Quran let us see give me a second to find it from their website <clears throat> all right I am in the Sabian website now the Sabian still exists but they are a little minority now you know there we go where is the book I'm just trying to open it for you uh, oh do you have to download here uh, I have to download give me a second my internet is not good today you know because of since we have corona things is not doing good with internet oh this is even not for it's not it's, it's not going to open with my computer it's for window uh, okay let's see Uh, the page is not working uh, too bad I wanted to show you the book Kenza Rabba anyway in the book of Kenza Rabba oh here we go uh, it's not opening the way it should be but eh, let me make uh, at least we have something this is Kenza Rabba Yasar which means left that this book it have two part Kenza Rabba Kenz is a treasure Rabba is coming from the word Rab from the Aramaic which means the treasure of God left and, and, and right so this is left this is Kenza Rabba left if you read it you will notice that it is the same as the Quran literally but one of the things about Kenza Rabba book that in Kenza Rabba they, the, the Sabian believe that the God of Moses Adonai he is Satan Adonai is Satan why he is Satan because simply he is the one who destroyed the king of the Sabian in Egypt who is the Pharaoh so Kenza Rabba or Sabian sorry they believe Pharaoh was a Sabian and what was the name of the God of the Pharaoh Lah Lah. It's written the same as the Quran, the same as Muhammad make like a rabbi music. Those who speak Arabic, they can read with me, and you will notice as if you are reading Quran. Ayyuha jahilun, ayyuha sajidun. Malakum alayya tahzanun. This is the same as Quran. And Fusukum mina ta'ami tahrumun. Wa al husuri tarkudun. Thiabukum taqta'un. Wadumu'akum tadrufun. Wa sha'rakum tuqalli'un. Quran. I remember Muhammad himself, obviously he was a Sabian. He is himself, he worships stars, gods. This is why in the Quran, Muhammad, he said that the Sabians will go to heaven. Do you remember? Chapter 2, verse number 62. How the Sabian will go to heaven, but yet there are people who worship stars. Muhammad was a Sabian. Even the Hadith actually confirmed that. What it does mean? You mean the the Sabian book? Uh, it's uh, you know like, I mean it's the same as the Quran. Like Rab words mean mean nothing. It's, I say sound is stupid. You know anyone who speak Arabic he will notice it sound is stupid. Like, oh ignorant, oh idiot, 
why you are uh, 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 like sad on me why you are forbidding yourself from eating food why you are sitting in the rags why you are cutting off your clothes why you are crying and you are like pulling up your hair like you know when you are angry you, you pull up your hair mean nothing mean nothing the whole book is you know but anyway this is their book and if you go and see the evolution you will see Muhammad he learned evolution from them you can go right now and search in Google the Sabian there's documentary about the Sabian watch their video and you will see when they arrive to speak about how they do evolution you will see Muhammad he took the evolution exactly from the Sabian yeah this is the name of the book Kenza Rabba. yeah I did not talk about this you know I mean usually unless like things lead me to talk about things I don't talk about it if if not it didn't happen before I mean because you guys it's your fault but I think I spoke about about this topic before but anyone who read Arabic he noticed right away that this is the same as the Quran as as uh, as the person who write it down for you Kenza Rabba you know I mean if you search let me see if I can find you the name in English but I don't think it's translated oh. okay let us see if we can find you Hmm. I'm trying to find. All right. Maybe if you search for the name like this, as you see in the screen, Kenza Rabba, not necessarily with A. It's how it's you know it depends how the person pronounce it you know so it can be different. So here they are pronouncing it, Kenza Rabba. You see it, Kenza Rabba. Here in Wikipedia they pronounce it as G, Ginza Rabba. You know. Anyway, we maybe we can make uh, some study about it. Uh, <clears throat> As I said, the reason I don't talk about it because simply it's a very complicated topic, this religion, and it will take us to take us to many direction. It's like for let us say for high academy uh, professional study, but it doesn't hurt to get some information, right? And this is the point of us being here, right? We always share. Maybe we'll repeat certain point for a certain reason to prove a point. The most important things about the garbage of Islam but for sure there's many things we don't mention in our videos usually because it's just for additional information you know uh, uh, like for someone want to study really more you know on, in the topic but anyway now after uh, uh, Yas al Qadri he said what he said if I am in the stage and okay I invited the Muslim I understand we are trying to have a dialogue no problem but shouldn't I say to this person, well, yeah, you are right, you know, this is what your religion is. But as I know that Muhammad, he said so. You see, don't debate with him. Just say, aren't you there to explain to us things? Aren't you inviting this man to make things clear? Why don't you say to him, well, your prophet says this. The Quran says this. Explain to us. No, no, they don't follow John the Baptist. Later, later, the belief of John the Baptist is added to their book. Later, they, they consider John the Baptist. This is additional. This is, this is after the birth of uh, John the Baptist. So they decide to add John the Baptist as a messenger of their own. But they don't believe in the God of John the Baptist. That's why they have their own. Uh, you see, uh, 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 the Sabian, they believe that there is a creators. And those creators have ranks not one God 
and those ranks like they are stars and those are stars they have levels like floor number one floor number two floor number three so those uh, 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 creators are the one who created us and there is there is one who created us and then there is one who created other creators so like it's a very complicated cult uh, however mostly they are peaceful they are not aggressive they don't believe in killing people in order to promote their cult or etc so they are not the same as muhammad if you go in the hadith uh, you will find that at the time of muhammad the arab referred to muhammad as a sabi the muslim they say lying to us that oh sabi yes it's the same as the word asabian but uh, uh, it doesn't mean that. It means that it's a new religion, not Sabian. Let us see if we can find it. Okay, here we go. Anyone who speaks Arabic, you will see it says here. A woman, she was getting her water. A bunch of Muslims were looking for water and they are with Muhammad. They ask her where we can find water. She said to them from there, from that direction. They said, can you come with us to our messenger to tell him? They said, who is your messenger? They said to her, Muhammad. She said, ah, oh, is that the Sabi? Anyone who speaks Arabic, he can see it. If we go right now to the Hadith in English, the Muslim translation, you will see it says, is that the one who is called Sabi? You see it? Is that the one is called Sabi? Why they are calling him Sabi? Because he's Sabian. The Muslim, they explain that because he, this is a new religion, so they call it Sabi. But, but this is stupid to say because Sabian are not a new religion. And Sabian is a very well published religion at that time. To the point all the people of Yemen, they are Sabian. You see, the name of Mecca itself is coming from the temple of Makkah. Makkah is a temple of the Sabian, the temple of the moon god. So Sabi is not a new religion. Sabian are one of the oldest religions in the Middle East. So how it's a new religion? And why the women she called him Sabi? And if you go and watch any video about the Sabi and how to do evolution, you will see those the exactly as Muhammad taught the Muslims. He learned from them evolution. They wipe their hair, they wipe their face, their 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 arms, their feet. I, I made a video about it before. You can maybe you can search it. Alright. Let us go back to James White and his propaganda trying to fool the Christians. Exactly, Ronnie. Ronnie, yeah. No, Sabian, Sabian, you know. Uh, actually, even, even Islamic scholars, they say clearly that Sabian are people who worship stars. And the Caliphate, you know, uh, uh, they, they have a special treatment for them just because they, their name is mentioned in the Quran. Otherwise, they should be killed. And nobody can explain to us why the Sabian they will go to heaven. Why Muhammad says Sabian, those who they are, okay, if the Jews, they will go to heaven. The Christian will go to heaven if they what? If they believe in Islam, supposedly. The Sabian, if they believe in Muhammad, right? Or they believe in Isa. The Sabian, they will go to heaven, why? Who is their God?
Any Muslim can I explain? How the Sabian will go to heaven? At that moment, Muhammad, when he is, you know, Muhammad like Obama, with the Muslim, he's a Muslim, with the Jews, he's a Jew. He go to uh, Cairo, he quote Quran. He go to Jerusalem, he wear the hat of the Jews. He go to uh, Detroit, he go to, uh, to, uh, to a Christian church, and he hold the gospel, and he start singing the gospel. Fraud. So Muhammad, when he was weak, he, he, he grew up adopting the Sabian. Then he married her from Khadija, and Khadija, she was Nasara. And Nasara was a new cult start to establish itself in the Arabian Peninsula. The Nasara simply, I don't know how many of you read the history, there was a group of those who believed in Jesus, but in wrong way. They are called the Nazarite in some names. Nazareth doesn't mean from Nazareth or the, the Jesus the Nazareth. It means the poor, the poor. Poor in what? This is a name was given to them by the Christians. They are poor in understanding. So they are rejected as cult. And then they were kicked out from the community and they run away to the, uh, because everybody, nobody want to do business with them. Nobody want to buy from them. Nobody want to sell with them. Like, you are not welcome. So they left all the way to Arabian Peninsula where the Roman Empire are not exist. Some of them, they went to Arabia. Some of them, they went to Iran, which means to the Persian, which means whoever is the enemy of the Roman, we will go and live there. So some of them, they went to Arabia and they start teaching their cult. And Khadija, the wife of Muhammad, she became Nasara. And as you remember in the hadith, where the hadith says that Muhammad, when he received the Quran first time, Khadija, his wife, who was Nasara, she took him to her cousin, or let us say kind of an uncle, he's an old person to her, but he is a cousin, and this cousin, who his name is Waraka ibn Nawfal, he became Nasara. You see, the Muslims they translate the word the Christian, the word Nasara as a Christian, but the word Nasara is not a Christian. We as a we as a Christian in the Middle East, we never call ourselves Nasara. Never. You will not find one single Arab Christian call himself Nasara. It's an insult to us. So when Khadija she took him to her cousin, which I believe strongly that Waraka is the father, the real father of Muhammad. Look at this. Khadija then accompanied him to her cousin, Waraka ibn Nawfal, ibn Asad, ibn Uzza, ibn Qusay. Waraka is, was the son of partner uncle, i.e. the father brother, who during the pre-Islamic period became Nasara, not a Christian. They lie in translation. Nasara, like Jehovah's Witnesses. And he used to write the Arabic writing and used to write of the gospel in Arabic. So what this man he was doing, he was writing from the Hebrew Nasara book, not our book, they have their own cult, and translating to Arabic, and this is the Quran. You see the Quran? That is the Quran. And this is why this man, he was making a book. And most likely he finished it. It says here that the one who told him that the one he saw, it was Waraka. Muhammad, he saw somebody, he did not know who was he. He came to Muhammad, Muhammad came to him, sorry. And he told, and Khadija, they told him the story. And then he told him that this is the angel Jibreel. Read, Waraka said, oh, this is the same Namus i.e. Jibreel, the angel who keeps the secret whom Allah had sent to Moses. This is how Islam started. By an Asara priest, which is a cult like Jehovah's Witnesses. And then, when Waraka, he died, you will see that Muhammad stopped receiving Quran. 
A few days after, Waraka died, and the divine inspiration was also post. What Waraka death have to do with the inspiration of God not coming? For a while, and the prophet became so sad, and we heard he intended. But remember, Waraka is already writing a book. Muhammad, he had his hand on the book. But does it mean that everything Muhammad he have is from that book? Muhammad, he fabricated his own Quran, additional to the Quran of Waraka. And how we knew that? It's very easy. You see, if I write one letter in English, and you insert that page in a book of Shakespeare, you can tell right away there's no way Shakespeare he wrote that, correct? Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? You can tell that this, the skills of the English is not the same. There is a horrible difference. So there is no way that this is written by Shakespeare. And this is how the Quran. The Quran, which is written by Waraka, have way better Arabic skills from the one made by Muhammad. And immediately you can tell. And maybe we can go for this topic in different time, but let us play more of the video. I don't know if she's going keep going more, but let us uh, move forward with this video. I wasn't planning actually to stay long. I just want to get this this liar busted. And in Aramaic and Hebrew, it's there are similar cognates right. that mention the name of God. Elo, Elohim is essentially Allah. So there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger. That's the first of the five pillars. The second pillar, a Muslim is required to pray five times a day, every single day. Uh, there are no exceptions. In fact, holy days, you do more prayers. Five times a day, a particular time interval. What the Muslim he pray when he pray five times a day? He ask Allah not to be the same as the lost Christians and not the same as the cursed Jews, five times a day. The Muslim, before he wipe his ass in the morning, he pray to Allah, asking him, please Allah, please Allah, don't make us the lost Christians and not like the cursed Jews. James White is listening. He is listening. He bring in the Muslim to lie to the Christians you have to pray uh, the third pillar is charity a Muslim is required to give a Muslim is required charity but where the charity is coming from from kidnapping Christian women selling them in the slavery market and taking their money and now we give a charity how we find that in the Quran <laughs> charity where the charity is coming from if you go in the Quran, this is chapter 9, verse number 28. The Quran says that the Christians, Jews, the Arab, who they aren't Muslims, they are filthy, dirty. And there, the verse says in front of you, don't let them approach the pagan. We are pagan for them. And later, by the way, James White, he asked him, are we Mushrikeen? And you will see what Yasser Qadri, he said to him. The pagan are unclean, so let them not, after this year of their approach, the second most. And if you fear poverty, soon Allah will Allah reach you. So the money now, there is no money. Where the money will come? It's clear, you see. They said to him, if you stop those people from coming to Mecca, who is going to bring money? Who is going to do trade? Where will, how we will make money? He told them, don't worry, be happy, Allah will reach you. How Allah will reach you? Right away, he says, go and attack the Christian. Do you see it? If you fear poverty, Allah will reach you of the bounty. What the bounty? The booty. Attack the Christian, steal their money, attack the Jews, they are rich, take their money, rape their women, sell them in the market, and you will be rich again. And yet this guy is talking about charity. And there's many verses in the Quran speaking about this too. Muhammad, he made verses saying that when you attack and you steal, you should know that the fifth go to my pocket. 
and to Allah. What war? War against non-Muslims. Do you see it? The man he is seeking the fifth right away before they start war. You need to know that I will take the fifth. I am the prophet. He's a gang. He's he's the leader. He's the he is a what his name is a Sparrow. In the part of the Caribbean, so he made verses. Obviously, he is the one who made. He says, "If you, when you go in war, you should know that the fifth of the share is to the messenger of Allah because he present Allah." And then we give some to the relatives and some to the orphan and some to the needy. This is the charity. So where the charity coming from? From attacking the Christians, the Jews, stealing their money, and then we give the needy from us, the Muslims, from the money we stole, some money. charity to the poor uh, annually so once a year uh, Muslims have to calculate there's a, a calculation depending on what you own and whatnot and you have to give to the poor uh, the four that's a lie that's a lie this is not what he's talking about have nothing to do with giving to the poor this is not for the poor this is establishment where Muslims the state collect money and then they give it as they wish they spend it as they wish that's a lie Fourth pillar is to fast the month of Ramadan, so the one of the months of the uh, Islamic. We will make a video later soon about Ramadan, so we will die laughing how Ramadan established. Calendar from sunrise to sunset, you abstain from food and drink uh, and uh, from intimacy with one spouse if you're married. Uh -huh. Intimacy. Well, isn't it Aisha? She said that the Prophet used to suck my tongue and when I am fasting. Let me see if I can find the hadith in English. He used to fondle her when she is, uh, he fondled her, he put his private part between her legs, excuse my language. Let us see. <laughs> okay. Here we go. The messenger of Allah, he you he would fondle me. Fondle me while he was fasting. Do you see it? You refrain from intimacy and in Islam, you know. Where is the fasting? The person is fasting and now he is putting his private part between her legs, touching her breast. We don't want to go in details, but we know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Do you see how they lie? Is that authentic story? Yes, it is. It doesn't say that, CP. And the funny here, by the way, when I actually say such a thing, such a statement, that who of you controlled his irabo? Irabo, his limp. You see, the Muslim they say his limp. What is what is the limp he's talking about? His penis. Can you believe it that the wife of a prophet saying who of you can control his I don't want to use dirty word, but we're trying not to must to use a street language. What is that? If the person is Muhammad is really controlling his penis, so why he cannot control until he finished the fasting day? She is saying, who of you can control his limp? His penis. And here we have another question too. How Aisha she knew that Muhammad is the best to control his penis when she never met a man before? In order for a woman to compare between two penises, Excuse my language. 
She have to see many, at least two. Do we agree? So if Aisha she never met a man beside Muhammad, how she that Aisha she put a sign in the top of her head or the top of her house saying the penis of Muhammad is the best and forget about the rest. Who of you can control his limp like Muhammad? And here Aisha she exposed herself that she was sleeping around because there's a verse in the Quran where Muslims accuse Aisha that she is practicing fornication with a guy who is his name Safwan ibn al-Attal. But this guy he said a Muslim he should not do any kind of intimacy during the time of fasting. So what is this? What, what is this exactly? I mean, how many lies we have to cover in, in five minute video? So imagine if I will keep running this video for the coming two hours, what we will find. Continue. Continue, please. Uh, and that is done to appreciate God's blessings and also with the food and drink aspect to sympathize with the poor, to, to force yourself. Yeah, we sympathize with the poor. This is why the price of food will go crazy in Ramadan and we eat more in Ramadan. In Ramadan, if you are a poor, you die. Go right now and search in Google about the price of food skyrocketing in Ramadan every year. In Islamic country, this is the most expensive month in the year because Muslims don't fast, they eat more. This is the month where they gain more weight, they eat like crazy, and they spend the whole night watching TV, the belly dancing and eating, belly dancing and eating. If they want to take a break, they watch Quran and porn. This is for the break. to recognize that food and drink is of the greatest blessings that God has given you. So mm. that's done once a month. And then the fifth and final, for those who are financially and physically capable, uh, they have to undertake a pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca once in their lifetimes. And from the Muslim perspective, Mecca is the city of Abraham and Ishmael. Ah, Mecca is the city of Abraham and Ishmael. But if we go in the Quran, the Quran says that this city they never have. Quran have two verses contradicting each other. Like the one who built the Kaaba or he raised the Kaaba is Abraham. And I, I, I will make a video about this to explain to you where this is coming from. If you go to chapter 2 verse 127, you will see it says, and remember Abraham and Ishmael raised the foundation of the house. This is the Kaaba supposedly. But if you go in different verse in the Quran, you will see the idiot Muhammad. He forgot what he said in the other verse. As usual. Where he said clearly that before you, Muhammad, we you those people in Mecca, they never had a warner before you. Never, never. <clears throat> Let us see. Do you see it? If you don't like the translation, we can change it for you. This is Yusuf Ali. If you are a Muslim who prefers certain translation, no problem. Just tell us what translation you like for all of the are lies. And we had not given them scriptures which they could study nor send them before you, O Muhammad, any warner. But you just said in the other verse that Abraham was there. And Ishmael was there. And not only that, supposedly the Muslim, they believe that Ishmael is the grandfather of Muhammad. And he is a prophet. And not only that, they believe that Ishmael have a book, Abraham have a book, and both of them, they were in Mecca. So how they never have a warner before you? This is a chapter 2, verse 127. And this is here, chapter 37, sorry, 34. Verse number 44. So you see how the fool Muhammad, he get himself busted? Now, the reason for Muhammad 
to say that Abraham and Ishmael and to claim he is from Ishmael. You remember I told you that the Nasara, you remember I told you those are Jews. Let us say, like today, uh, there's a group, the, 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 the Jews who became a Christian, we call them Mycenaic Jews, right? Mycenaic Jews. Those are the same, but they are not Mycenaic Jews. They are Nasara. Why they are called Nasara, we explain to you, because they have a poor understanding from the of the Bible. So the Christian gave them that name, the, the poor. Not because they are poor as money. They have a poor understanding, so they are rejected. So the sect of the poor, Nasara, they escape Jerusalem, the land of the, wherever the Christians are, specifically wherever the Roman are, because the Roman became, the Roman Empire became a Christian country or Christian land. And they went to Arabia and they start spreading their cult. And those Nasara, who they are desperate to go back to Jerusalem because they are from there, they needed someone, they needed the Arab to go in war and get Jerusalem back to them. And Muhammad was a gift for the Nasara. So they convinced Muhammad by their cult that the Arab are from Ishmael. I'm assuming that they convince him and he maybe he do not know they are lying. Maybe he's lying. We don't know. That he is from Ishmael and he have the right to take back Jerusalem for he is from Ishmael. This is why you see Muhammad he was praying all the time, most of his life actually, in the direction of Jerusalem. Even when Muhammad was in Mecca, he was not praying to uh, Mecca, he was praying to Jerusalem. Do you understand? Did you ask yourself why Muhammad was praying to Jerusalem? If Mecca is the house of Abraham, and this is what Allah told him. That house became the house of Abraham later. Under the influence of the Nasara. In the beginning, there is no house of Abraham. There is Jerusalem only. But when Muhammad gave up, that there is no Jerusalem, he is not going to have it, he cannot do it, so he decided to change the direction from Jerusalem to Mecca. If you remember, there's a hadith where it says that Omar, he made many Quran. So he claimed saying that my Lord agree with me, which means his God Allah, he agreed with him in three things. In some stories, they say five and seven and ten. One of them, to take the place of Abraham as a prayer station. So why all this time Muhammad is not taking the place of Abraham a prayer station? Do you see it? This is, was a suggest from Umar ibn al-Khattab, who became caliphate later of Muhammad. And Muhammad, he took his statement as it is, and he claimed Allah told him that. This is why you see the hadith says at the end, the verse is revealed as I said. Omar said, I agreed with Allah in three things. In fact, it doesn't say that. It says, I, Allah, Allah agreed with me in many things, in three things. You see it? Allah agreed with me because he is the one who said a sentence first, and then Allah, he take it supposedly, and he make it Quran. Obviously, Muhammad is a fraud. His friend Omar, he says something, he like it, he say, uh, Allah told, he, not only that, he accept the verse as it is. Let me see if I can find you more hadith. Actually, I should go live in the other, uh, other channel, right? Look what it says here. Does it say in front of you that Allah 
so the verse this revealed the same as I had said was revealed. Does it say that? I mean, how how much we want more that Allah is a fraud and Muhammad is a fraud and Islam is a fraud. Is it the Quran says, can you make human and genie? Can you make one verse like the Quran? And then we find that the Quran is made by a man. His name is Omar. Can you believe it? Let us continue with the fraud. <laughs> Mecca is the city where Abraham left Ishmael. The Bible mentions mm. leaving Ishmael in the Valley of Paran. Well, for Muslims, the Valley of Paran is the Valley of Mecca. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, the Islamic faith basically takes its, its, uh, its heritage from the Ishmaelic side of uh, the progeny of See? Abraham. The five pillars that you just mentioned, uh, the first one is the Shahada. Mm -hmm. um, and so for, for people to understand, I normally show a video of uh, people saying uh, the Shahada so they can see. This is how a person becomes a Muslim. So anyone... Look, look at uh, James White. You know, he, he brings the guy to the Christian. So the, the guy, is the, it's a perfect invitation to deceive the Christian. So now tell us about Shahada. Like, you don't say we don't agree with this, etc. No, no, no. The guy in the stage, he promote all the lies he want, and James White letting the Christian listen, so he can he can deceive them. Hmm? Right. Um. Uh, uh, you see, uh, Yusuf uh, Masihi. Uh, are you are you a Muslim, my friend? You call yourself Masihi. You are answering who? Nasari is different from the word Nasara. Nasari is not the same as Nasara. The Nasara, obviously, you do not know what you are talking about. Are you there, Mister Masihi? Do you hear me, my friend? Where is this guy who called himself Yusuf Masihi? Are you a Christian person? Okay. Well, let me educate you, my friend. When you speak about Islam, we are talking about Islam. So don't mix things up. A Nasiri is not Nasara. Nasiri, this is the Arabic translation of Nazareth. Right? All right. But the Quran... Quran explain where the word Nasara came from. Don't come with your own answers or your own. If you don't know, learn something. Don't don't assume something, right? Uh Supposedly, the story says that the Messiah, he said to his disciple, who want to be my Nasara? Nasara mean the helpers or the supporters. Coming from the word Ansar. Not Nazareth. According to the Quran. However, the real word Nasara is coming from the poor. The origin is coming from the Hebrew, which means the poor, not the city of Nasira or the city of Nazareth, where supposedly uh, 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 the Bible speak about. So, the Messiah said, who want to be my Nasara, Ansari, for the sake of Allah? They said, we are your Nasara. Do you see it? Chapter 3, verse number 52. So, don't make assumption without knowledge. However, the truth is that the word Nasara is coming from a name was given by the Christian, the true Christian, to the false Christian, who they have their own propaganda. All right? 
Okay, let's go back. One who has, and there, there are seven, I think, seven uh, requirements for a true Shahada. Would you still hold, because I heard you yeah, lecture so on that. The, so the point is that uh, the Shahada, or the testimony of faith, it must be uttered with sincerity, with belief, with understanding. So these are the so, requirements. So, so the fact that I've said it in Arabic doesn't mean anything because well, it's not joined with those. If a professor of Arabic or Islamic studies utters the Shahada right. to teach his students what it is, obviously that's not an It's not a magical thing. It's you see, you see, you see, look, look, look at the deception. Look at the deception. James White, whatever this guy he say, he agree with him. But all of us renew. You have to say the Shahada in Arabic. Because, so why you didn't say to him, okay, why we have to say it in Arabic? Do you see how this guy, this wicked man, he deceived the Christians? Can you really Become a Muslim without saying Shahada in Arabic? Or it's a must to say in Arabic? It's a must. You will never find a single mosque except you to say Shahada in, in English. So why James White saying so? Ah, oh, you are saying so. It's not the magic. Whatever the guy he says, he agree with him. Lie as much as you want. I am not here to expose you. I'm not here to correct you. I'm not here to let you... You know, you get busted. I am here to sponsor your cult. Isn't it obvious? How in the world this man, he can be accepted as a minister in any church? This is why I say to you Christians, be careful, be careful. There is a lot of false teachers out there. This man, say to him the word Catholic. Actually, during the video, he said to him Catholic. Right away, he's excited. Just say Catholic. He is all over the place. Say Muslim, he defends Islam. Wicked man. This is what happened when we listen to a wicked man. And this is why, you know, the Bible says it clearly that this is an order from God that we should not support a wicked man. The wicked man have many, you know, many example. But the clear example is is to sponsor a cult, fight God, the true God. You see, there is all of us, we are sinners, no exception. All of us, we agree in that, right? I am sinner, you are sinner. But being a sinner doesn't make you really, I mean, so horrible to the point you are an enemy to God. I mean, okay, you confess your sin, you try to repent, you try to fight it. You have your sin, you have your weakness. But to promote a cult, and this cult is exists for one reason. Muhammad, he says, one of my name is Al-Mahi. What Al-Mahi mean? I am the one who will erase the Christianity. I will erase it. You shall not spread a false report. If this man is bringing false report and you claim to be a Christian, so you know it's a false report. So you put him in the stage, whatever he's saying, you let it go. You are spreading false report. You shall not join hands with wicked men to be a false witness, to be a, a, a witness of, 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 a, of a lie. The name is enter faith. The core is deception. Interfaith is my faith and your faith. Let us see. Not you agree with the other guy, whatever he say.
Exactly. Um, and, but that is what makes you, there's, there's nothing else beyond that. There is That's no what makes baptism, uh, even though uh, Islamic law strongly encourages, but it's not mandatory, to take a bath and cleanse yourself before embracing Islam. But there is no baptism. Uh, there's no other. Is that true? Is that true? I mean, this video is, if I want to make a video about Muslim videos, I will spend my day just to, just to cover one video. If we go right now to the Quran, he said there is no baptism. That's absolutely false. That's absolutely false. The Muslim, they believe in baptism, but not baptism by water, because Muhammad, he do not know how to do it. He's a thief. Read carefully. Chapter 2, verse number 138. Here the word is Sibaga, they don't translate it. Let us see what translate what, what the what translation is. <clears throat> I mean some Muslim translation is really hilarious. Maybe the translator he do not know what the word means, so he keep it as it is. Aren't you supporting, supposedly translating? Our religion, between two brackets, the baptism of Allah. So yes, Muslims believe in the baptism. And what is real religion? How you do baptism? By taking shahada. You can open right now any interpretation and you will see this is exactly what I say. So this guy is lying. He said there's no, there's no baptism. And who can do baptize better than Allah? However, the word in Arabic is Sabagha. And here, Sabagatullah min Ahsan. Yeah, it's, you know, the, 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 the uh, uh, Sabagha is exactly what the Sabi and they use. Many people maybe do not know that Sabi and they believe in baptism too. Part of their ritual, this is why they adopt John the Baptist as one of their own, for he did baptism. And the Sabi and they call their baptism Sibra or Sibara. And this is why it appear in such a word in the Arabic Quran. All right. Look like, you know, I have to go live again in the other channel. I don't know how I can make it. At what time we will go there? Six o'clock? Seven o'clock? What time? How many hours from now? Let me go to the Arabian Prophet. I set up a date. Okay, hold on. Let us see when our coming occasion is. Yeah, uh, who wrote the Quran number two? Oh, it's going to be uh, at 7.30 p.m. New York time. Okay, we have time. But anyway, I, I better take a break so I can, it's not easy to sit in the chair all these hours. Uh, you know, it's not fun. When Muhammad talk about Ahmed mentioned in the Bible, did he, did he talk about Kenza Rabba? No. You see, first of all, about Ahmad, this is another additional proof that Muhammad's name is not Muhammad. L let me explain to you. If my name is Muhammad, how my name became Ahmad? Correct? Obviously, this is not his name. It's a word mean almost the same, but it's not the name. That's why Ahmad, Muhammad, you know. Otherwise, he should say, that he prophesied that a person will come after me, his name is Muhammad, not Ahmad. But because Ahmad or Muhammad doesn't matter which one, for it is about the meaning, not about the name. 
You know what I mean? Do you understand? The real name of Muhammad is Qatham. Now, uh, uh, Amelia in the text, she is typing the word Abu Kapsha. The reason they call him Abu Kapsha because simply uh, they worship stars, the stars called Kapsha, you know, according to some reference. You know, there's a star, it's called Kapsha, and Muhammad, he was worshipping that star. This is why they call him Abu Kapsha, which is funny, by the way. Like Kapsha in Arabic, like sound like when you say uh, the meal, in Arabic we say Kapsh, like uh, the the male uh, animal of the of the lamb of the sheep, you know the male. We call him Kapsh, the one who have big horn. Muhammad, one of his names was called Abu Kapsha, but this is not was a name. Let us say this was a given name, not the name by birth. The name by birth is Qatham. Ahmed in Arabic is almost the same as Muhammad, which means the praised one. Simply Muhammad claiming to be the Messiah. He's claiming to be the Messiah. By calling himself Ahmed, that's mean he is the praised one. You see, when the Muslim they say to us, Muhammad is just a prophet, he's a servant of Allah. So why his name is Muhammad? How he is just a man and his name is the praised one. As I know, the praised one is only God. Right? The praised one is only God. Our education is endless. Our fight is not only against Muhammad, false teaching, is against false teachers who they claim to be Christians. And that make it, make it more hard on us. For now we have the devil indoor inside our houses many christian or they call themselves christians who they claim to be ministers bishop priest they are the enemy of christ the bible says clearly be aware of false teachers will come between you from between us not from the from outside there's no excuse to anyone not to say the truth. You see, you want to be nice to Muslim, be nice to Muslims. And I am nice to Muslim too, but I say the truth. Being nice is not about being a liar. It's not about giving hugs. It's about saying the truth. That's what the Christ is Christ about. Christ, he was he was nice to the Jews by saying to them, "You liar, hypocrite." This is how nice he was, because he wanted to correct them. This is why he when he was in the cross, even the arcane him, he says, "Father, forgive them." My friend, be aware of false teacher. Not everyone say to you, I'm a Christian, you believe him. The Bible says, from their fruits, you shall know them. And anyone, if you ever see Muslim saying a Christian prince is a wonderful man, obviously Christian prince is not a Christian no more. Do we agree? Do we agree, people? You will not find one Muslim is angry from James White. For always he defend the devil of Muhammad. This is the scale, this is the balance, how to know who is a Christian and who is not. If they are going against him, it means he is doing something good. If they are supporting him, he is supporting the devil. As simple as that even if you don't mean it by the way because that will not change anything let us say I don't mean to support the devil but I'm supporting the devil at the end of the day the Messiah he said from their fruits you shall know them you worship no God beside me you accept no scriptures beside the scriptures and anyone who add even a letter to it he will be punished and the Bible say clearly who is the liar the liar is the one who denied the Father and denied the Son. The one who denied the Messiah is a Christ and denied the Father and the Son. So if you are not willing to say that to a guest just because simply simply you want to be play perfectly correct and hypocrite, 
deceiving the Christians, you are not a Christian between the Christian community. So be aware of those people, my friend. Be careful. By the way, we make a video for Sabil, Sabil Ahmed and we made him shish kebab. And we challenge him to debate me. Sabir Ahmed, he posted a video. He did not say anything about Christian Prince. He would not debate Christian Prince. He has, as if he heard nothing from me. See the cowards? What about the other guy? Anyone remember his name? Insan, Insan. What happened to this guy? This guy, he want to make episode number one, number two, number three. In number two, we got him a hit in the head, a hit in the testicles, and he is gone. That's it. He can't stand up again. This is what happened. Anyway, thank you guys for being here. Feel free to download this video. We will keep it for some time until you download it. And we will be later live on air in the other account. But maybe I should change the time if I feel I am really not not rested enough yet. Just you see, actually, supposedly today I will rest my throat because yesterday at night I felt really too much pain in my throat. Uh, but I cannot resist. I cannot resist to do what I do. I feel like guilty when I see this deception, and I am not standing against it. I feel guilty when I see maybe Christian now was watching this garbage and he will be deceived. Even though yesterday I said to myself, let me not to go live on air tomorrow, the whole day. And now I will go live again after this. So I will do my best to be back. The second one is going to be... Uh, In about two hours from now maybe I will move it for later I think I will move it for later so I can rest my throat and go out walk my you know walk a little bit sitting in the chair is really it hurt it hurt badly sitting bad you know I mean for long hours uh, let me see I will make it maybe by 10 p.m. New York time that will give opportunity for those who they are in Indonesia to wake up and to join us. All right. I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. Don't forget to download the video. Share it again with your friends. Uh, earn the blessing of the Lord for fighting the misguidedness of false teachers. For the enemy is powerful. And his propaganda is a huge and if you ask yourself why the Muslims are publishing such a video in their channel, because simply it's perfect for them. 310,000 they watch it by the help of James White. 310,000 people misled it just in one, by the way, the same video, you can find it all over. So God knows how many millions watch it already. How many of your children's our Christian family been deceived by James White? Never take a side with a man. Take a side with God. As simple as that. And this is why we expose the lies of this man. I want to say thank you. May the Lord bless you. And Ante will see you again soon. In a few hours from now, Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And talk to you later. Bye-bye. Take care.